Okay, so in this video, we're going to show you how we replace this large 20 ton unit with a much smaller new Aon RN unit utilizing this custom adapter curb. Okay, so here's what we were dealing with from an existing unit standpoint. Here's a nice profile of the side of the unit. I particularly like the additional rain awnings that were added here. Here is a quick shot of the compressor section. You can see this is in pretty rough shape. One of the challenges we had here that's not uncommon in older units is that the name tag was gone. So, you know, how do you figure out the tonnage if the, from the unit if there's no name tag? Well, here's a couple of options, you know, you're, your best bet is to get with the owner and see if they have any information on the unit, such as the original selection or submittals or maybe an order copy, et cetera. Um, a few other things you can also do if that is a dead end, you can look for the compressor model numbers and use that to backtrack into the tonnage. You can also check to see if you could find the TXVs of the unit and then pull off the model number of those that could lead you towards the tonnage as well. As a last resort, you can always measure the cooling coil making some assumptions that it's 500 feet per minute face velocity and 400 CFM per ton. You could back into the tonnage that way. I would only do this as a last resort in conjunction with other data because you are taking some risks when you're taking this approach. Of course, the best scenario is to hire a mechanical engineer who can calculate and update the building load and develop the plans and specs around that. That is the case for this project here, which made our job much easier. So. The specified unit was an Aon RN 20 ton unit at 6,500 CFM. Now we know what we're gonna replace the unit with. Now let's figure out what exactly we have here. Okay, so now we know what we're going to replace this unit with in terms of dimensions. Now we've gotta get some dimensions of the existing curve. Measuring the length and width is fairly easy. We could do that right here on the roof. Next, we need to determine, you know, the size and location of the supply and return air openings, which, you know, as always can be a little bit of a challenge and it was here too. We were able to access the unit from the space below and find out where the duct connected to the unit and take some measurements there with the assistant of, assistance of our contractor and our roof curb manufacturer. This is difficult uh, to get the exact locations, but we're shooting for quote unquote close enough provided that we can make some slight ductwork and curb modifications once, once the curb arrives. Okay, so now we have everything we need to get an engineered adapter curb drawing, submittal, and pricing to the contractor. Okay, so now that the existing unit has been craned away, we still have this vibration isolation rail that needs to be removed as well. So, you know, you can see we're just kind of looking around here, checking what kind of shape the insulation is underneath. Uh, here's the removal of the isolation rail and you can see the springs in those will be removed next. We'll just pull those out by hand. Uh, as you can see, the guys are, you know, cleaning up what's there, getting rid of the old nasty insulation, which is always a good, a good idea. Okay, so here you see the new 20 ton AM unit rolling in along with the new adapter curb. So now we're gonna hoist this thing up there and we're just starting to lift it here and here comes the new adapter curb. A very nice product by one of our trusted curb suppliers, and they did a great job on supporting us. So this is always a nervous part of the job because you never really know if everything is gonna match up 100%. We always do our best to make sure that happens, but you just never know till you get it there. Um, you always need to be prepared, you know, for some kind of field modifications, which, which we'll show you we had to make here in just a moment. So. Also, it's important to remove these wood shipping standoffs that we forgot to remove. We got the curb down and then we had to pull it back up and remove these. And these blocks are just there to prevent the curb from, from sitting flat or resting on the flange as it's shipping on the, on the trailer. So we did measure the curb openings uh, as well as the, the ductwork sizes when the guys were taking the insulation out and tried to reconcile that with the curb, you know, and make sure it was going to fit we were off a little bit and this happens often. I think we had to remove about six or eight inches of uh, sheet metal here to open this, uh, this supply opening here. Um, so, you know, when you're doing this kind of work, just always be prepared for some sort of field 
modifications. Uh, we also made some minor mods to the ductwork um, to make sure we can get it in there and, and, and this turn out just fine. So, okay, so here comes the curb for final install. You can see the duct penetrations there. We had to modify slightly to match up to the curb. The curb supply air opening was a little bit smaller than the duct there. So we had to, to make some modifications to that as well. And here's a nice shot of the adapter curb in place on the, on the existing roof curb. Okay, so now it's finally time for the Aon unit. And here comes the Aon. This is an RN20, as it has been mentioned a few times. This is what's called a C cabinet. Uh, so we're craning this over there. And again, this is another time where it gets a little bit uh, nerve wracking just to make sure it all fits up. We know the adapter curb on the base fits on the existing curb there. Now we need to, you know, make sure that the, the curb on the top fits on the supply and return uh, of the Aon unit here. You see the guys here just making some final checks with the dimensions, making sure it all it all evens up here, safely lowering this this onto the to the adapter curb. You can see those are hail guards on the Aon unit there on the condensing unit, the, the, the condenser coil, I should say. So the condenser coil is slanted, as you can see there really is very little chance of, of hail getting in there to damage that. But the guards do act as a, a guard for, you know, people walking around the roof or that may bump into it or your tools might bump into it or something you carry might bump yeah, into the condenser coil. So it's not a bad idea to have those, although we don't, we don't provide them very often. Great shot of the final installation. Looks beautiful. Everybody on this job did an amazing job. Uh, thanks to Sean McConnell with Insight Partners, who was the project manager and account executive on this job. And the contractor was amazing. And our curb supplier also did an excellent job supporting us. If you need support with adapter curbs, our email address is in the description of this video. Shoot us an email. Let us know what you have existing. Let us know what unit you're going to. We'd be glad to, glad to help you out with that. And thank you so much for watching. We appreciate you. Thank <laughs> you.